Hey everyone, this week we're doing some bird photography and we're talking about back button focus. So I've come out to a local area today to do some bird photography and I'm using a function which you can set up on most DSLR and mirrorless cameras called back button focus. So if you don't know what that is, we're going to talk a little bit more about it later on. But right now, I'm just going to tell you that I've got my D500, Nikon D500. I'm using the Nikko 300mm PF f4 lens and i've also got the 1.4 times teleconverter on there as well so that's given me around about 420 millimeters of focal length and on the crop sensor body that's equivalent to about 600 millimeters on a full frame camera so let's head on get some shots and we'll talk a little bit more about back button focus So what is back button focus? Basically it's a way of separating your shutter button from your focusing button. Typically on most cameras the shutter button which is the one here on top which you access with your index finger will focus and also take the shot. So you'll press it halfway down to focus and then fully down to take the shot. And that's a great idea, it keeps everything in one place, you only need one button and it works really well most of the time. But for bird photography or any fast moving subjects it can be much more beneficial to use back button focus and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages and also how to set it up on your camera so one of the advantages of using back button focus is that you can focus on your subject recompose your shot and then take the shot without having to change focus. There's different focus points in the focusing system on your camera and often they don't go all the way to the edge of the frame so no matter how you take your shot sometimes you'll have areas of the frame with no focus point and if you're using the normal shutter button to take that shot you can focus on part of your subject and it'll be in focus and then you'll recompose your shot but then when you press the shutter button again it will obviously refocus the image and that's no good you want to have the focus that you set the first time so by separating the two buttons autofocus and the shutter button it means that you can point your center focus point at your subject focus then you can move your camera reframe the shot and take the shot with the shutter button without refocusing a lot of modern cameras nowadays have focus points all the way to the edge of the sensor so it's not as much of a problem but you can still benefit from this because the center focus point on your camera is typically the most accurate. So you probably already know that you can set your focusing system into different modes. For example, you've got single shot focusing, that's what Nikon calls AFS. Like I said before, that's where you can focus on your subject. Then you can let go of the focus button, move your camera around, and it will stay focused on that point. You've also got continuous autofocus, so Nikon called that AFC. If you're tracking a subject, say a bird, the camera will try to continuously focus on that bird as it goes in and out of the focus plane. So that's really useful, but you can only choose one or the other. 
With back button focus, you can have all of that rolled into one. So if you're pointing at a static subject, you can just press once with your thumb, it'll focus on the subject. You can snap away, move your camera around, come back, snap again. And then if the bird flies away, then you can hold your thumb on the back button and it'll then use the continuous autofocus if you're set in that mode, which you need to be, as it flies away. So that's really useful to have the, both of those rolled into one. Also, you can use the focusing ring on your lens to manually override and then use manual focus if you'd like to do that. Normally, if you're using the regular shutter button, you could refocus with the ring, but then when you press the shutter button again, it would automatically autofocus. So that's why back button is really useful, so you've got much more control of your focusing. So some of the disadvantages of using back button focus are that A, it can take a little bit of time getting used to, there's a little bit more coordination required having two different buttons, and also it can get a little bit tiring sometimes, particularly if you've got a big long lens. Today I'm using the 300mm PF lens, it's really light and easy to use, but when you've got a big heavy lens, having to hold the camera, the weight of the camera with that lens, with your thumb on the back, can get a little bit tiring. So not the most spectacular day of bird photography ever. I think all the exciting subjects have decided to stay in bed that morning, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. And the main thing is I did get out and I got a bit of practice as well. So just a final thing, I said I'd show you how to set up back button focus on your camera. Remember I'm using a Nikon. If you're using a different camera system, then it's gonna be slightly different, probably fairly similar, but you might just need to go onto Google and find out exactly how you would do this in your menu system. But on the Nikon, you would come into the menu and on the left hand side, scroll down through the icons until you get to the pencil, come across into this menu 
and come down to controls, which is F. Click on that and we're going to click on the top one, which is custom control assignment. And we just need to double check that the AF on button is set to AF on. So that's the top option there. And it is. Sometimes you might have it set to something else. So you just need to double check that's on. And then we go back to the menu, come up to the top one, which is autofocus, click on that. And we want to come down now to A8, which is AF activation. Click on that and you need to select AF on only. So now that that's selected, we only have the AF on button as the focusing button and the shutter button will only take photos. So really useful, give it a go, particularly if you're doing bird photography. So that's about it for this video. A huge thank you for watching. I'm glad we got 2024 kicked off now. Next week, I'm hoping to do some landscape. I hope you'll tune in for that one. If you watch every week, I really do appreciate it. I know I say that all the time, but I really, really do mean it. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button. And that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video, usually every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot, everyone, and bye for now.